given the fluidity of sexuality in ancient Egypt, Julius Caesar is probably not Cleopatra's first sexual partner. And cue the inspirational pop music. Okay, let's just set this straight. You should know this already because I've spoken about it so many times, but you cannot apply modern ideas of sexuality onto the ancient world. What we have to understand is firstly that most of our sources about sexuality come from the ruling classes. So our ideas about the debauch and the um, decadent Egyptians, Persians, Romans, Greeks, whatever, only reflect a very small subset of the population. And even talking about the upper class sexuality was not very fluid. It was instead entrenched by different strict social taboos. Rather than the gender spectrum that we are familiar with today, the elite essentially had um, the roles of dominant penetrator and the submissive penetrated. That's why Caesar was lambasted for being the queen of Bithynia, for he copulated in a passive role with the king of... Uh, Mark Antony was also ridiculed by Cicero for being penetrated by Publius. Clodius, who was the um, like the Kardashian of his day. This is why the powerful older men always slept with young boys or slaves. It's also why lesbianism was frowned upon. One party would have to put on a artificial uh, phallus, which would subvert the entrenched social hierarchy. Homosexuality was also something seen as something of lust. You would still have a wife for the purpose of marriage and for children. And outside the elite, homosexuality was very rare, but was somewhat grimly tolerated. When you're not a millionaire and survival um, is difficult, like in all societies, the sanctity of the family becomes paramount and homosexuality is a form of decadence that many can ill afford. You would never have met a woman like Cleopatra with complete control and confidence in the, her own possession of her sexuality and her identity. You're joking, right? Are we inserting modern ideology again into this ancient story? The idea that Cleopatra was sexually loose and immoral sure comes from the fact that she sought relations outside the dynasty. Unheard of, treasonous even. But also if you read Plutarch, it's also basically Roman propaganda. Writing for an austere Roman audience, he tried to paint Cleopatra in a way that all Easterners were uh, portrayed in Roman times. They were decadent. They were debauched, sexually immoral, and because she was a powerful woman, unnatural and also somewhat evil because that's what all um, powerful women were. They were basically witches. So by saying that she's in control of her sexuality is playing right into Roman propaganda and in control of her identity? What? This is 1800 years before liberalism, um, 2000 years before identity politics. I'm afraid in the pre-modern world, you don't get to choose your identity. Who you are does not come from within and change with your mood. Ooh, I'm feeling a little bit more masculine today and therefore I'm a male. No, who you are came from who you were born as or where in society you found yourself in. If you were a freeborn male in Sparta, for example, you were a soldier, that was your duty. Also, if you were born into a ruling dynasty, well, it's your duty to rule. This is what you were meant to be. There is no internal identity politics here. Rome, on the other hand, was just a baby, a young, growing, right, empire. Uh, Rome was just a baby. Um, the Roman Republic predate the Ptolemies by multiple centuries, and even this empire by this time, well, They've ruled over the multi-ethnic peoples of Italy for two or three centuries at this point. Um, they conquered Carthage and bits of Spain a hundred years before. I don't really think Rome was just a baby. This is a city that was founded by farmer soldiers. They were down-to-earth, sturdy people. <laughs> Down to earth sturdy people. I'm sorry, but the first Romans, according to legend at least, were uh, basically the exiles, the criminals from um, other places in Italy who had no home. And Romulus just attracted those people and congregated them in the big, in the, in the new city. And the first women of Rome were stolen from other places too in a big kidnapping event. Are these um, sturdy um, down to earth people? I'm not so sure. The Roman 
power system is very male oriented and Cleopatra's reputation becomes damaged because she is not what the Romans expect of a proper woman at all. Egypt's women had almost equal rights to men under the law. Women could choose who they married, they chose who they divorced, they could start businesses, they kept their own property. Women in Rome were supposed to stay at home. Um, yes, legally, even in the late um, Ptolemaic period, women um, under the law had more rights compared to most um, of their other contemporaries in the Mediterranean, but it's a misleading idea to say that this means they were basically equal in today's sense. In pre-modern societies, the state had comparatively very little control over the people, and thus the rights of women were instead controlled socially and not under the law. And I'm afraid that women in Egypt still tended to need the approval and support of the men to do any of this and being a pre-modern society the roles of men and women were very clearly defined by societal and practical norms. Egypt's women did not need to conform to that idea. Yes, they did have to conform to traditional and social norms um, where bringing up children were their main priority. So uh, maybe the elite didn't have to conform to this idea, but everyone else did. As I've said in uh, previous videos, um, the new women of late Republican Rome is the best parallel of modern feminism we can find in the ancient world and not Ptolemaic Egypt. Caesar! What a positively striking symbol of Egypt she is. Right. Ready for the plucking. <laughs> is this the respect Rome affords its women? Cicero, even if I was, one wonders if you could even find your tool. <laughs> Um, Cicero, Cleopatra, you speak nine different languages. You should surely know that it's actually pronounced Kikero. <laughs> And once again, Ptolemaic Egypt was not a shining beacon for feminism. I meant no disrespect. I forgive you. It's not every day Rome welcomes a queen. Rome has never had and never will have a queen. Rome was against the idea of a woman being a ruler. It's that simple. Okay, this documentary is trying to make the extraordinary claim that Ptolemaic Egypt is more progressive in the modern sense than the Roman Republic. The reason why Egypt and many monarchies like England have had queens is not because of feminism, it's because they simply valued the survival of their dynasty above all else. That is the reason why Rome won't have a queen. It's not because um, they are more backwards, it's simply because they were a republic. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the fourth part of this series and um, I'll continue to make these even though it is killing all my brain cells. Thanks for watching.